if you have type 1 diabetes, you've undergone a disease process which has destroyed your own islets, the best thing to do is now replace them with islets that would not be rejected by the immune system and function as beautifully as the original ones did before you develop the, the condition. I think even high school kids know now that embryonic stem cells can make any cell in the body. And the tricky part was to figure out how to tell them to make the cells we want. We managed to figure out a way to do that at a scale that was relevant to humans. So rather than just making a few cells, we can literally make hundreds of millions of cells. To each dot is 4,000 cells, so there are 400 million beta cells in that vial. That's all the beta cells any of you have in your body, that's it. Those are the factories that make the insulin. So that wipes out the glucose monitor market and the insulin market, if we can figure out how to get those into people. These are drugs that keep your immune system from recognizing anything foreign and would otherwise destroy the tissue that you transplanted. These systemic immune suppressive drugs are very toxic. For many years I've thought that can't be the best that we can do. We've got to be able to do better and get to this point where we can do a transplant without adding systemic immune suppressive drugs. So you could just put the islets into an individual with type 1 diabetes, thereby replacing uh, their otherwise damaged islets and that would essentially be all that you needed to do. We've been working to develop little devices that have living cells that can sense glucose and give you insulin. There are some real challenges to getting this to work. We've been working for many years to try to figure out the right material for these devices. So we were actually able to identify modified sugars called alginates would resist uh, fibrosis and scar tissue formation. Alginate itself is, is a substance that comes out of a particular type of seaweed. It turns out to be quite biocompatible in its own right. So you can put it into the human body and the human body doesn't have a huge reaction to it. And the other approach involves the immunological puzzle that has been recognized for many years which is that when a growing baby, when a fetus is inside a mother, half of its genes are from the father and yet the mother doesn't reject it. So how is that accomplished? I often describe that as like um, caution tape around a, an accident. The police put up caution tape and cars go by and they know something unusual is there but that says just move along. Well, there's these certain HLA genes that I think just tell the mother's immune system, well, this thing inside of you isn't all you. It's not gonna cause trouble, so just move along. So the overarching goal here is to use modern methods of genetic modification to change the genes in the beta cell and make a super beta cell that the immune system can't detect. Fundamental point is that the biology of the disease itself and then the biology of the, of the cures that you might promote are, or develop are very complicated and no individual human mind I think completely encompass what we have to do. I mean I've been in Boston now 22 years and I've seen it grow even beyond where it was amazingly at 22 years ago. It's an absolute hub of medical product innovation and development and to, to be positioned here geographically matters enormously for the work that we do. JDRF is a phenomenal mission-driven organization. We couldn't do what we do without the funding from JDRF, but it's the, it's the being joined in with their mission, which is to cure type 1 diabetes.